Tube CV collectors. Here's a really vintage one. You don't see many of these. This one's especially rare because it's a Canadian version. It's a Raytheon Raytel TWR2C. Raytheon Canada, Waterloo, Ontario, Canada, where they had a manufacturing plant. Mainly uh, radar, aerospace, uh, that type of stuff. But they did make 2A radios and CB radios through uh, their Pelco subsidi subsidiary, subsidiary in the U.S. And then at their plant in Canada. This is an all-tube, all-basically hand-wired unit. Dual conversion, the IF, which is kind of neat. Keeps out a lot of the noise. Can be run on 120 volts, 12 volts DC, or 6 volts DC. Has a multi-vibrator. It has a rebuilt one uh, by a local rail shop that doesn't operate anymore. And almost all the tubes are Raytheon except for a couple. It had the uh, original rectifier I replaced. It was testing very marginal. Uh, there's two brand new GE6, there's a 6BH6 and 6BH6 in the IF strip. So I'm just going to turn it on, let it warm up. It comes up pretty fast. Had to replace the selector switch on this one. It had been modified from five channels to two channels. And, and it was a real butcher job inside. Comes up very quickly, this radio. Uh, so now it's back. It was originally manufactured as a five channel. A company modified it, likely this communications company, General Communications, which doesn't exist anymore. And this may have been in a delivery truck, something like that. It had a lot of use. There's a lot of wear in the faceplate. Quite a bit of wear in the mic. The original mic cord was rubber. It was literally turning to dust. You could hardly touch it without pieces coming out. This is a dollar store phone cord, which works really well on these. And I'm just going to turn off my light here so you can see it better. You want to key it up. Break channel 11 for radio check. Break for radio check. You can see the talk indicator comes on and it modulates. Inside the mic here is actually the carbon transmitter from a Northern Telecom rotary dial set. It's actually a Northern Telecom um, transmitter. And carbon mics are fairly high output, but they have kind of a clippy sound. Gives it a unique sound in the air. This has two, two sets of crystals, channel 11 and channel 13. They're very hard to get. And you're lucky if they work. Here's uh, channel 13. Breaker 13, Breaker 13. We are getting out there. I'm using a basic uh, curtain antenna. It's a half wave antenna hooked up to the curtains. SWR is 1.1 to 1. And uh, I'm not going to do a lot more restoration on this. I painted this front piece here. I redid the Raytheon sticker. I printed it off. It's almost identical to the original on photo paper. Um, the original knob on the channel selector was broken. I found a very similar one, only it's a little darker. But that's what we have for now, of course, this. I took out all the tubes, deoxidized the pins and the sockets, put them back in, checked them on the tester. Uh, channel selector switch, as I mentioned, and I've tweaked everything. It's the original electrolytic capacitors. There's two cans. Most of the coupling is uh, ceramic in between stages. This thing was built. And you know what amazes me about it is, built in 1962 and it still worked. And the person I bought it from likely had it about 40 years. Uh, it's part of a, a radio shop that's no longer around. Been around since the 70s. And this was in his personal stash. Um, anyway, it does work. I was actually hitting some people on Channel 11 last night was skip. It was working amazingly well. Uh, and they said, it's a great sounding radio, blah, 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 you know. But anyway, that's about it for now. This is one of these Cold War relics. Gotta keep them going. Thanks for watching and listening.